taking a look in someone's locker. Here's your look at the new Beast Kingdom Pirates of the Caribbean Davy Jones Dynamic Action Heroes. One of Disney's most exciting live-action series introduced moviegoers to pirates, captains, and beings from the depths of the Seven Seas. Beast Kingdom's Entertainment Experience brand add-ons to the DAH Dynamic Action Heroes line with a widely popular Davy Jones. Multi-layered painting makes this slimy, moss-ridden clothing pop, and 20 points of articulation combined with a host of accessories such as his broad sword, cane, and dead man's chest give fans ample ways to pose this DAH figure. Dead man may tell no tales, but the person behind the camera is going to tell you all about this release of Davy Jones from the new DAH line. I'd like to thank the folks over at Beast Kingdom that did provide the sample of the DAH-029 Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. <gasps> And we can have a look at this review. The figure is available right now through various online sites and specialty comic book stores also as well. As well, I can also provide the link down below to Beast Kingdom's website, to which if you guys are interested and would like to check out more in what's going on in Davy Jones's locker, you can also see the stuff that they are offering over on their website. That being said, let's go ahead and grab the tape measure and see exactly how tall Davy Jones stands. Living up to DAH, the dynamic action with eight. The figure, in fact, is eight inches in height. Now, of course, I did leave the hat off for this. I'm going to bring the hat in a moment, but stock and out of the box, Davy Jones does in fact stand 8 inches in height, or the figure's 20 centimeters tall. Figured first, before we actually look at the accessories for Davy Jones, let's have a look at the display stand that comes included with the figure. Oh, and also one other thing, of course, the figure comes included with an instruction sheet. The instruction sheet, it's only printed on the one side. Pick, of course, the language you'd like to read. It shows you basically just the movement of the figure and how to replace and swap out the hands, as he comes with three various hands. Uh, the figure also comes included with a way to remove the hat. It also shows you as well to open and close his mouth, and it can hold the little tiny pipe inside his mouth. We're going to talk all about more of that in a moment. Move that to the side. The figure also comes included with the stock display stand. One would also be treated to whenever you get yourself a dynamic action hero figure from Beast Kingdom. It tends to be this type of display stand. What's though decorately detailed differently though, is you've got all the cool little uh, tentacles here all across the top, and you've also printed in gold, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean. On the front as well, I love when they actually take the time to put the name of the character on the front. Keeps things consistent. And while the stands are consistent, of course, the names of the characters are going to change, varying from what figure you have on display. But you got yourself a very nice printed in gold Davy Jones name. Now, with the display stands, normally the case is you have yourself a post. The post attaches into the hole. And then of course, you've got yourself the waist clip on the top that does open and close. Normally, this would be something that would clip around the waist of the figure. But I mean, judging by the size, the mere mass of Davy Jones, there's really no way that this actually fits around his waist. Rather, instead, you sort of have to kind of keep it wider like this. And when you're putting it against the figure, it literally just sort of rests against the back. He has the one long sleeve that drapes along the back of his jacket. And kind of you can get the waist clip kind of around that. It seems to be enough to keep the figure stable. Isn't necessarily the case where the display stands can be holding the figure, literally just more bracing it, preventing the figure from falling over. Now then, having a look at the accessories to come include with Mr. Jones, the figure comes included first with a compass. The compass has been nicely replicated from the one that we see in the movie. You can see some nice white outlining on the outside of it. The front clasp keeps it close, and then on the back, you've got yourself the hinge. There is also a loop, but I can't seem to find a place on the figure where this actually attaches onto. Maybe I'm overlooking a place. This does actually open up like it does in the movie, just very carefully opening it up here. On the inside, you can actually see, while not working, gives you at least the front face of what the compass would look like. The thing about it, though, is as you're opening it up, the hinge here on the back, when you go to close it again, you kind of have to then take the back and snap it back in as it tends to free itself from the clasp located on the back. Very, very small, very, very detailed, very, very cool. 
I put that to the side before I lose <laughs> before I lose it. The figure also comes included, while a little bit bigger in size, the figure also comes included with this pipe. The pipe doesn't actually emit anything. There's no smoke coming out of this, but it's made of a more softer plastic and very nicely detailed for the size again that this is. This does fit into his mouth, which was really nice to see that the figure actually does have mouth articulation. Simply just take the top of the head, kind of lift it up as you're holding down to the bottom of his chin. That then opens up a gap space in the middle that you can then take a smoking pipe and put it inside. Make sure you're closing then again the, the mouth so that it's going to keep the pipe from falling out. That's what it looks like with the pipe in his mouth. Likely, I'm going to be displaying the figure with the pipe because I like the idea, first of all, that they actually include this. And again, being screen accurate, it does look quite good in Davy Jones's mouth. For the right now, at least remove this because, again, I don't want to lose it. Put that to the side. Then the figure also comes included with... Let's have a look at maybe this next. This is Davy Jones' chest. Located inside the chest, a pleasant surprise if you open it up. First of all, just before we actually open it up. Oh, you're leaving out the surprise. Just give me a couple of moments. Seeing some of the nice detail work that they've actually done to the chest itself. It looks like in this case, this is the base color, the more darker gray. And then what they've done is they've scratched on, brushed on, dried on brushing of a silver paint that really helps a lot of the details to pop. You may hear something though rattling on the inside of the chest. That's because when you open it up, it's not though still beating, but it still has inside the, the heart of Davy Jones. Now, when you do get this guy out of the box, this is actually already inside the chest. And actually just to add further to that, it comes inside a little baggie. I've already taken obviously a little bit liberty of removing the heart. So if you go looking around and think that the heart is not included, check inside the chest. It's going to be in there. The heart, it's very nicely detailed. Again, you've got some nice very vibrant red happening here. It looks again like they probably used a darker plastic, likely maybe like a black or a gray, and then brushed on, painted on the red. Very vibrant looking heart, I uh, don't think. Okay, it's not be it's not still beating. It's supposed to still be beating, but for a size of small plastic like this, you can't expect a heart still to be beating. Put it back in the chest though. Let's put it off to the side here. The figure also comes included with this cane. The cane actually does have, I mean, some really nice detailing also done to it as well. The paint is a little bit more minimal here, relying more on just the black plastic. There seems to be a little more of a sheen also added to it as well. And this does fit into his existing hand. It does also technically fit into this hand also as well. This is the one, although I just dropped, I just dropped onto the floor. I'm going to have to go pick that up. This does actually fit into his hand, that hand, and also does fit into this hand as well. Although with this, you're going to have to pry the fingers away from the palm. And then again, we'll just slide the, the cane, the makeshift cane into his hand. It's a little bit more believable of a cane if he actually has it more close to the ground. So what I usually like to then do is just bring the arm down just a little bit and then have him sort of propped by the cane, less actually holding the cane and more resting on the cane. This requires a little bit more of a balancing act, of course, because he does have the peg leg on the one side. But of course, you do have yourself the display stand. That's what it's there for in the first place. And the floor claims another accessory. We're going to come back to this hand, the one that I actually just dropped. We're going to put that to the side. We're going to come back to those hands because I did want to talk a little bit about them. I also have taken the liberty of removing the cane. We're going to also put that to the side. The figure comes with two versions of sword. One that's already sheathed is this one right here. And while it does look like it's covered in barnacles and all the things that would settle on this over age, actually the blade surprisingly inside is still pretty clean. Still pretty shiny, pr still pretty polished. It's nicely done here in a silver paint. And while the hilt and the guard, as you can see, has some really interesting texturing to it, as well as the hilt that slides inside, you can sheath the sword. And then there's a little clip here on the top. You can then take the sword. And the only place that I've really been able to find it, if you just move sort of his tentacle beard out of the way, you can clip it onto the belt itself. The thing about it, though, is as you're clipping it onto the belt, you want to make sure that you don't snap the peg. And again, just line everything up here, take this. And again, it just slots into the top. And the thing also about it too, is once you get it down onto the belt, you want to make sure that you're able to remove it. Don't re remove it abruptly because again, like you're just going to, there we go, tuck it onto the belt itself. And he actually can have his sheath sword on the side of his holster or inside of his, of his body. It is going to limit a little more of the articulation. Not that the figure really has a lot of articulation anyways. We're going to get more into that. But there is a technical place to actually store the sword other than just having it displayed in his hand. Carefully then removing the sheath. Let's put that to the side. The figure also comes with another variation of sword, which of the two is actually my favorite. It's a much longer sword. You can see as well the guard and the hilt is painted in a more kind of darker copper color. 
just to compare the swords, let's go ahead and unsheath this one. As you can see, a much comp a much longer comparison. This was a much broader sword, much longer sword. It's about, what, a third the sword longer. It still has the same kind of coloring in the blade, but yeah, the guard and the hilt is very differently colored. This does fit into his hands, but the rather interesting thing about it is going back then to the hands that he comes included with, picking up the figure right now, stock and out of the box, the figure comes with this one, with the extended one longer finger. But then he comes with a variation of that, where it looks about the very same type of hand, although it's a little more, well, it's it's opened up, more of a relaxed hand. So if you didn't want to have him necessarily with a gripping hand, you would give him then a more relaxed hand if you want to just have him resting or have the arm resting down, I suppose, in a pose like that. The one other hand that I really like, though, the one that I happen to have dropped, is this one right here. Uh, you can go ahead and remove the hand from the sleeve. It might involve me actually having to hold it with, my, with both hands. Just remove the hand. There we go. And then you can pop this hand in place. Now, you can do a one of two things. You can either put the sword in first, or you can put the hand in first. I find sometimes it's easier to put the hand in because at least you can put more pressure against the peg. Because the peg... I ended up having to heat the hand to get that actually to fit inside the socket. Once that's in place, now again, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can take then the sword and then take the sword and holster it into his hand. First of all, pry the fingers away from the palm, slide the hand in there, the holster in. I'm really glad also that the handle is a softer plastic. If this was a brittle plastic, this would be broken instantly. But with it being a softer plastic, it's a lot easier to actually slide into his hand. Sort of just finagle it down, fit it down into his hand. And again, if you find it easier, you can put the sword in, in his hand first. But again, when you're putting the hand into the socket, I don't want to have to worry that the sword's getting in the way of things. Then from there, you can then take the spiraling tentacle. And you can actually wrap it around the blade. Just keep going on your merry little way until eventually you get all the way around. And then you've got Davy Jones actually holding the sword with the tentacle finger wrapped all the way around it. Now, seriously, how cool is that? The fact that they would actually take the time to design it like that. This is going to be the way I'm going to display the figure. Though, for the purposes of the rest of this review, it's going to be a little harder to kind of look at the figure. So I'm going to have to take then the sword out of his hand. All of that work, I'm going to just take the sword back out of his hand. Just once again, unwrap this. Softer plastic always is beneficial, of course, than using a harder plastic. We're just going to remove it from his hand for right now. The last thing the figure comes included with, obviously, is going to be his hat. The only thing I would say, though, from a head sculpt standpoint, is while the head looks really good here, the very obvious kind of more shinier brown that they use for the top of the head kind of seems out of place. One good thing, at least, is that the hat attaches over top of it, so you're never going to be able to see it. It's not necessarily frictioned, though, so any little bit of banging, the hat seems to slide off pretty easily. But the hat, like the sheath we looked at before, is very nicely textured. You've got some darker gray happening. A lighter, more lighter greenish beige sort of banding the top of the hat. You can see the inside of the hat very has a more shinier finish to it. Everything on this guy looks slimy, slick, and wet. Again, like the hat doesn't stay well, so if I was to tip it upside down, the hat would easily fall right off his hat head. I kind of wish it could have frictioned in place a little bit better than what it does. But obviously, if you're going to be having this guy displayed standing like this, you're not likely going to have running into any problems where the hat's going to be falling off, unless you happen just to be banging the figure. Getting a closer look at the figure's details, though, for his head sculpt, one of my favorite things, and one of the reasons why I like this specific movie so much, is just because Davy Jones' design was so awesome. I like the look of this beard, the way it's, it's actually being used of tentacles here. And it's being an octopus. Of course, he does have the sack there, the back of his body and the back of his head. Everything on this guy not only is painted well, but again, you've got that clear finish that they've added to the surface of the plastic. So everything on him, this guy looks really, really wet and slick. The details don't just stop from the head alone. And of course, there is the mouth articulation, which again, you just sort of tilt the head back while holding on to the beard. And then you can kind of just bring the beard back in if you want to close the mouth again. The eyes are really good. You can see as well, there's a little bit of lighter colors of pink that they've added in it to help just break up so much of the cream and the beige color that they're using for the tentacles in the mouth. Then, of course, you've got yourself the jacket here for Davy Jones, which is a softer plastic, but it is going to limit some of the articulation when we get down to looking at the details on the figure. There's barnacles. There's all the little things that we growing on the side of his body. Like the jacket looks very aged as naturally it should. He has the one claw hand which not only does have articulation in the elbow portion, but you can take the pincer and open and close it. Stellar looking paint that they've added to it, a more darker rusted red, but then they brushed on or painted on a more darker kind of black. It really does make the claw stand out. 
Of course, he only has the claw on the one side. The other side would be, of course, the tentacle finger. But again, really, really sharp details done, done to this guy. Wear and tear naturally caused to his suit and his jacket. You can see like all the little rips and tears that he's got there. Naturally kind of done in a more darker gray, but then there's little areas where it pops and shines and more of a lighter gray. I love the, just the texturing on this guy. Some blue makes some appearance further down below here. Again, I don't know if it's barnacles or if it's just the things that start to develop all over this guy's body. One would be a natural boot that he would still be wearing, while the other one, as you can see, is sort of more of a, a claw peg leg. Really nicely designed and matching actually the same similar rusted red that we saw earlier when we looked at the claw hand. Spin this guy around to the back so you can see like there's still a lot going on here on the back of the figure's body. The rip in the area of the sleeve. Now the sleeve is, it looks like there's actually something that's supposed to be there, like a magnet or something. I think it's just the way that it's designed. There's no mention anywhere in the instruction sheet that there's something that's supposed to sit inside the sleeve, but it kind of looks like there's an impression there like this should detach when really it's actually just space. It's, there's a gap already in between the sleeve and the back, back of the jacket. All the little snaps that would normally be on his jacket. You've got some nice lighter color that they brushed on there as well. Just overall, a really, really nice looking figure. For the articulation on this guy, if you bear with me, I'm going to remove the hat for right now. The head is going to be limited. That's an understatement. The head can only rotate. Well, you're, I'm doing it right now. So it does look, it doesn't really look like I'm doing much of anything, but it does rotate only slightly. It does look up only just by a little bit. It only looks down just by a little bit, but a lot of it is attached to the idea that the figure does have mouth articulation. So while you do think you're actually moving up the head and up and down, you're actually in actual fact, only just opening and closing his mouth. Shoulders aren't as limited as perhaps his mouth. This one shoulder is the more limited of the two. It can come out, but it actually is further down, if you notice here on this side, than it is on this side here. In both the cases, actually, the arms still come out comfortably. Comfortably, I would say, at 90 degrees, even though this one's higher than the other. The arms do go forward, go back. You can actually, in fact, rotate them all the way around. Figure does have a hinge in the elbow, although that's as far that you can actually hinge it. It does also allow the forearm to rotate back and forth. The hands, whatever you decide to use for hands, do rotate also all the way around. There's a hinge joint, obviously, in there as well. The upper torso is on a ball joint, although it's very limited. And a little bit of movement, you can also see there's a space where there's not any paint that's actually painted on the inside of the figure. Sort of a left barren area of white. It, further away, you don't see it as much. And also, you can also hinge the, the torso down just a little bit to hide a little bit of that. Legs do split. They seem to be once again on ball joints. You can take the legs, move them forward. You can take the legs and move them back. You can also swivel the leg here at the top, just actually below the rips in his legs and his pants. The figure does have a hinge in the knee, although while doing it, all of this stuff is not sharp, but you certainly feel it if you run your finger against the texturing that they've sculpted into the plastic. The figure, though, has knee articulation, decent knee articulation, in fact. The figure has also articulation in the boot this side, so you can rock it back and forth, up and down, and technically you could rotate it all, also all the way around. And then on this side, he does also have knee articulation, even though I guess by now he wouldn't have any more of a knee. It still does rotate the same way. You can also rotate the top of the thigh also as well. And uh, there is also articulation down below here too. So if you're not liking the angle that they have it right now, you can easily twist this around and have it a little bit more angled back like this. All in all, a stellar looking figure. I really like the design of Davy Jones here. It, you know, Davy Jones is one of those standout characters, even though he really is just a bad guy in a movie. There's something so unique and interesting about his design that's still memorable to this day. Pirates of the Caribbean. The one that I always go back to is the one starring Davy Jones. And I think that Beast Kingdom has done a, an incredible job on this guy with the release of this guy, giving not only the accessories I would have hoped could have come included with Davy Jones, but handling in such a clever way. One of my favorite things is the way they've actually twisted the tentacle that can wrap around the sword. Some really cool ideas thrown out here by the folks over at Beast Kingdom. Even though I think of Davy Jones, I tend to think of Dead Man's Chest. This Davy Jones is actually coming to us from Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. This release from the folks over at Beast Kingdom. If you guys are interested and would like to get your tentacles on Davy Jones, he is available again through various online sites for about $130, $135. Which again, considering for how much detail that Beast Kingdom put into this piece in the first place, not to mention, not to mention, all of the cool accessories that come along with him. I think $135 is a great price 
sacrifice for this guy. Now, he doesn't have necessarily, again, the means to attack properly onto the display stand, but as you can see, as this figure spins around on the old rotisserie, you can see he actually just more rests against it. He luckily also does have the use of a cane, so of course you can have that resting propped underneath his hand. Happens to be also the same hand that I had wrapping around the sword. By far one of my favorite things that come in clue with this figure. All in all, again, if you're a big fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, whether it be Dead Man's Chest, whether it be At World's End, whether it be just a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean in general, this is a great figure that you would want to pick up and add to your collection. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Beast Kingdom that did provide this sample of the Pirates of the Caribbean At World's End Dynamic Action Heroes, DAH029. I don't know how I'm going to put that all in the title, but we were having a look at the Davy Jones. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And also, if you don't mind me throwing out a question to you, the viewing audience, of all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, which one is your favorite? My personal favorite, again, is Dead Man's Chest, but what is yours? Let me know down below in the comments section. Certainly, as well, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit with a like? If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly on board to see more Beast Kingdom, then make sure, if you haven't already done so, that you're hitting the subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. There's going to be a lot more videos coming your way. So, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.